Hello, this is International Master Atanu and you are watching Life is Chess. In this episode, we shall continue our topic, our discussion on the history of chess combinations. Did you know that Napoleon Bonaparte, one of the greatest French generals and war strategist, was a keen chess player? He had played quite a few brilliant combinations during his time and this position which you are seeing is taken from one of his games against one of the madams, Madame Remusat, with whom he used to play chess. It is white to play, white is a piece down but he has drawn black's king to the center of the board and Notice how Napoleon Bonaparte manages to checkmate his opponent. He plays bishop c4. Any modern chess master would appreciate this move and would call it as the sacrifice of decoy or attracting the king inside our own territory to checkmate it faster. Napoleon played queen b3 check. The only move for the king was d4. And then Napoleon plays once again queen d3 check. Another and it is checkmate. Another example by Napoleon Bonaparte. It is white to play. White is an exchange down. And he has to find a checkmate before black consolidates on his material advantage. Of course, white has many ways to win. Most notably, he can try to trap the black's queen on a1 or he can go and attack black's king right away. Despite having many different ways to win, Napoleon finds the most effective and quickest way to finish the game. He played rook f8 check. The most forcing moves where the opponent doesn't have many options. The only move for black is bishop takes f8. White plays bishop g5 check. Black does have an option. He can play bishop e7 or he can play king e8. King e8 is met by queen f7 checkmate. So bishop e7 is the strongest defense. White captures bishop e7 after king f7, queen f7 check leaving king d8 and now queen f8 checkmate. The strategy of chess can be applied in other fields as well. We have already seen the great uh, French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte play uh, good games of chess and he was arguably one of the greatest military strategists the world has ever produced. Now we shall see an example by one of his generals Alexander Deschapelle and he played this game against Charles Labourdonnoye a very well renowned chess master. At this point when the game was played, Charles was a student of Alexander. It is white to play and as we can see, black is threatening to promote his pawns and black has an overwhelming position with so many pawns, all of them so many past pawns five past pawns you can see this position black has one two three four five connected past pawns it's a very rare sight but it is white to play and white finds a brilliant mate based on the awkward position of black's king can you find the checkmate The great general in Napoleon's army found a very visual way 
to finish the game with white. He played the move knight h6 check, sacrificing his knight. Black is left with, uh, with an option. He can either play king h8 or he can play g h6. He opted to capture the knight. Had he played king h8, Alexander Doshapele, he uh, calculated a brilliant win from here that is based on knight and bishop combination. He would have played knight f7 check after the black king comes to g8. He could of course repeat the position but he had planned a brilliant queen sacrifice. Queen takes g7. The idea is after king takes g7, bishop f6 check. Notice the king has no square to escape. The only move, well, all the squares are covered by white pieces. The only move to escape is king g8, after which knight h6, a combination of bishop and knight checkmates black. Therefore, in the main game, uh, black preferred to, sorry, here, black preferred to capture h6. And now white plays a brilliant way to finish the game. And that was queen h8 check. The idea, the theme is called decoy or bringing the king uh, to a worse square, a weak square, where it got completely surrounded by a single bishop. It is basically trapped by his own pieces, cornered and trapped. And in this picture skew position, we can see although black is two rooks up, none of the pieces can actually come in defense of his king. The game concluded. Black played rook f8 check and after white recaptured, there was no way how black could save bishop f6 checkmate. He preferred to queen and black simply played bishop f6 finishing the game very beautiful especially if we consider the game was played in 1804 and it was not played by a professional chess player but in a very very example, renowned we have seen military strength. charles la bourdonnoy lose a brilliant game against his teacher now we shall see la bourdonnoy in action against a british player mcdonald uh, it is almost very similar to the previous example because once again La Bourdonnoy has a host of passed pawns. Now three connected passed pawns, all very advanced and despite being an exchange down, these pawns are the most dominant factor in this position. What did or how did La Bourdonnoy think? He simply wanted to get those, these pawns promoted. He played the moves queen e1, paving for the way for the advancement of these two pawns. White played rook c1, defending the f1 rook. Of course, the queen could not be captured, and black was threatening queen f1. White played rook c1. Black pushed d2. The pawns are racing. It's difficult to say which pawn will promote first. White played a sneaky move. Queen c5 attacking the f8 rook suddenly. Now white threatens checkmate and black's defense. Since this rook is attacked by the pawn, white defends rook d1. And black now pushes pawn to e3. It's a rare sight to see three passed pawns lined up to queen. Black plays queen c3. Sorry, white plays queen c3. And now black finishes the game in a very, very visual manner. He played queen d1. 
after white took queen d1 he played e2 now all the three pawns are ready to queen so there are well this there are four ways three ways how black can queen in the next move and not only queen but also deliver a checkmate back rank mate so faced with a defeat now we shall see result. two short combinations by the british player howard staunton staunton was considered to be the best player during his times best player in, of the world and even bobby fisher considered to be one of the best 10 best chess players the world has produced so in this game, Staunton is playing against his teacher, Poprat. White to play and White finds a simple petty combination. White played the move Bishop to F7. The idea is not only to open the line for the rook, but also to close this rooks control over f6 square so in one move white opens lines close lines closes opponent's line as well as he attacks the queen and uh, well if black takes queen f7 the queen is overburdened the h6 pawn is left without defense white can play queen h6 and after the only move queen h7 queen f8 checkmate if black captures with the rook then white can capture the queen and after the eventual recapture the queen coordinates with the e6 pawn and once again black will be left helpless after white plays any move for example queen d8 we see another example of a Staunton and this time he was black against John Cochrane, a very talented young British master. Uh, Cochrane is also known for his contribution to chess in India because he's the one who formed the first chess club of India named Calcutta Chess Club. Here it is Cochrane white at the receiving end against Staunton, the best British player. Staunton as black finished the game in a very obvious, simple and instructive manner. Rook g1 check, diverting the rook to g1, leaving f2 unguarded and cornering and trapping the white king on h1. Knight f2 check. Alexander Petrov, the great Russian player who is very well known for his contribution to chess opening theory the Petrov defense but he was also a very very strong chess player who played many beautiful combinations during his career here we see one game he played which he played against Hoffman in the year 1844 in Warsaw Petrov is black it seems he is in a losing position because the white knight on f7 threatens the black queen on d8 and h8 and if black captures the knight white would capture the d5 knight with a check followed by the c5 bishop it is black to play and it seems black is losing but black found a brilliant defense which turned the tables now pause for a moment and find out what you would have played in place of Petrov. Petrov played the move castle. A brilliant move sacrificing the queen. And now the main motive was after white recaptured the queen. Black played bishop f2 check. The king is well brought up the board. Now after king h3 black plays d6 check the only way to save checkmate is e6 the other move g4 
is hopeless because black can checkmate by knight f4 in one move. So the only move is e6 after which black plays knight f4 check forcing white to come up and now black plays knight e6. It is a very complicated position but Petrov had calculated, he had foreseen that he would win uh, uh, in all variation against all defense by white and there are many defenses but what happened in the game is knight e6. Uh, of course white could also play bishop c1 or he could play so many other moves queen d2 we can just see an example after queen d2 black would recapture knight d8 and in this position, black is only one piece up against a queen. But the king, the white king is exposed. It is drawn into black's position and all black's pieces are pouncing on the king. The king doesn't have many squares to escape. After these moves, you can see the king really getting cornered. And after rook f3, it's double check and checkmate. So what happened in the game is knight e6. So here if you count material you will find black is full queen down and he only has three pawns for a queen. But all his pieces are very active and the most important factor in the position is white's king is exposed, it's, it is drawn into black's position. White plays king g5, black played rook f5 check and that leaves only king g4. This is the only move and after h5, white had to play king h3 and once again the mate we saw short uh, while ago, rook f3, double check and checkmate. So it was a long combination but a brilliant combination played by a brilliant chess player. Before we end today's session, I would like to show another very beautiful combination played by the same player, Alexander Petrov. Here Petrov is white and he is playing against Szymanski. Once again, the venue is Warsaw in Poland and this game was played in 1847. Here black is two pawns up but the most dominant factor in the position is the king is still in the center and white has a very strong knight on d6 ready to jump on d6 and deliver a check. It is white to play and win. Yes. White played a very beautiful move and that is bishop f5. Black's queen is left with no move. If the queen captures f5, white would play knight d6 check, forking the king and the queen. So it is called decoy or attraction. The queen is attracted to a more vulnerable square which left the queen vulnerable to double attack. In the main game, well, if black plays knight f5, white would play knight f6, double check, check with the queen, check with the knight. The only move left would be king f8 and then queen e8, brilliant checkmate. Now going back to the first position, I would like to show you an alternate win which is also very beautiful and very instructive but I think the move played by white in the main game uh, may be better. White could have played bishop h5. Once again black's queen doesn't have many squares the only square is queen e6 and now uh, if you love double attacks and forks this is the position for you. Bishop f7, fork with the bishop. The bishop attacks king and queen and black has two moves. If he takes with the queen, 
knight d6, knight fork. The king and queen are forked. And if he plays, takes the bishop with the king, once again a brilliant move, knight g5, knight fork. So howsoever black takes, black is faced with a knight fork. However, in the main game, white chose bishop f5 and that was also sufficient to win. So with this, we end today's class. Today's session saw some beautiful examples by the historic players ranging from Napoleon Bonaparte, his generals, to more serious chess players like uh, Alexander Petrov and Staunton. I hope you learned lots of tricks from the masters of, of the past. In the next video, I shall show you some more examples from more renowned personalities from the history of chess. Stay connected. Goodbye.